another email asking why we don't cover the Famicom anymore. We do. There's just only so much to talk about. <sighs> if only... Sean sounds really sad. I should send him something to cheer him up. But what? Oh, here we go. There we go. That'll cheer Sean up. Wait, this is crazy. I'm going to need something to eat on the way. Here you are. Wait, 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 wait. I can't just send a baby to America with a box of cookies. She's going to get bored. Here we go. Here you go, Sarah. But wait, I already sent Sean a kid for his birthday. Maybe I should send him something else. What could that be? Huh? Oh. It's 2011, and soon everyone will be getting their hands on a 3DS. It's a remarkable breakthrough in 3D technology that doesn't require special glasses like games, movies, and TV of the past. And the present. Right. On the cusp of its release in Japan, we thought we'd take a look at Nintendo's first foray into 3D gaming. What are you doing? We're introducing the Virtual Boy. Actually, we're going back seven years before that to Nintendo's original 3DS for the Famicom. Are those He-Man sheets? Maybe. There were many games made in the 80s which tried to evoke the illusion of 3D depth. One such method was isomorphic 3D. You can see these examples in lots of different games. Zaxxon. Qbert. Populous. The Immortal. That was an Apple II GS game made by Will Harvey and his Sandcastle team at Electronic Arts. <sighs> Whatever. Marvel Madness. Oh! Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure! Seriously? That's gotta be like the third worst game ever made. Bogus. Nintendo must not have been satisfied with this approach. Because in 1987, they tried out a 3D glasses attachment called the Famicom 3D system. Otherwise known as the original 3DS. No one called it that. Well, they should have. Released only in Japan, the Famicom 3D system used an electronic shutter system with two liquid crystal windows that can alternate quickly between clear and totally opaque. Each eye sees a different image from the same screen, making the 3D effect possible. The 3D system adapter plugs into the third player expansion port on the front of the Famicom. Or on the side of the twin Famicom. Oh, you okay? Kimochi. Are you guys done? Hi. The adapter had a pass-through port so you could still plug in other accessories. Like the power glove. Or the light gun or other accessories that the 3D system might use. Well, that's fine for one player, but what if I don't want to give seizures to onlookers? Nintendo thought about this, which is why there are two ports for two different sets of goggles on the adapter. Whoa! Whoa! Unfortunately, like the Virtual Boy after it, the Famicom 3D system was doomed to failure. What, what do you, you mean? mean? Well, let's start with software. How many games did it have? I don't know, like... seven? I see. So, a small library, just like the Virtual Boy. And how many of those were any good? A couple. What else does it have in common with the Virtual Boy? <sighs> well, if we make any more fun of it, the fans of the Famicom 3D system and Virtual Boy are going to come after us. One step ahead of you. Okay, so Nintendo made a handful of games for an accessory that wasn't terribly successful. What's new? Actually, they only made one.
Famicom Grand Prix 2 3D Hot Rally was the sequel to Famicom Grand Prix F1 Race. This time around, the F1 Formula races were replaced by rally cars, but it's essentially the same game. Only this time... In 3D! Ooh. Thanks to the refresh rate, you need an old CRT television for this effect to work with a 3D system of glasses. So you're out of luck if you want to see this on an HD TV or, say, an internet video. Aww. Also, despite the labels, neither game features Mario or Luigi. But look at that! A dust cover flap! Finally! Okay, that leaves six more games. Who made those? Square, creators of Final Fantasy, made three of them. Tobidase Daisaksen, also known as the 3D Battles of World Runner. Highway Star, which came over to the US as Rad Racer. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. God, this thing sucks! And JJ, also known as Jumpin' Jack, the sequel to Toby Dase Dai Saksen. Not to be confused with... Regardless, JJ was the last title Square released before. In fact, wasn't the music done by Nobuo Uematsu? Well, maybe Nintendo saw his potential and put him in a game that people actually heard of. Speaking of games you may not have heard of... Konami released Falcine, a third-person space shooter, only enhanced by an actual 3D. You can tell it's a Konami game because of the awesome music and the special stickers that came in the box. And that it's actually pretty fun. Asmic released Cosmic Epsilon, which reminds me a lot of 3D World Runner, except you can actually fly and shoot. You can shoot in 3D World Runner. You can? Y you just have to get the upgrade. Uh oh. Ah, I don't have the patience for that. Rounding it off is Attack Animal Gakuen by Pony Canyon, which is. Wow, really similar to Cosmic Epsilon. Actually, all of those games seem really familiar. Not yet! Save it for part two! Aww. The great thing about these games is that none of them required the 3D glasses. On most of them, you can switch back and forth from 2D to 3D by pressing the select button. Except Falcine, which made you choose in the start menu. Any game with the 3D Goggles logo in the corner and some that didn't supported the 3D system. I think I can figure out why this never took off. It was just too expensive. You had to have a Famicom. And some games were only available on disc system. And then you had to buy the glasses, which cost a bit more than a game. Altogether, easily hundreds of dollars. Now, with 3D trying to gain a foothold in the 21st century, you have the exact same problem. Except now you have to pay thousands of dollars for a new 3D HD TV, uh, glasses for everyone to use it, hundreds of dollars on a Blu-ray 3D player, and tons of new disc content for movies you already own. What? I have to buy the Super Mario Brothers movie again? $250 for a 3DS is starting to look pretty good right about now. But if you still don't want to spend that much, the NES offers an even cheaper alternative. A more low-tech solution than the Famicom 3D System's LCD shutter glasses is the tried-and-true red and blue. The advantage of this method is that both images can be overlaid at once, and so it doesn't require power to the glasses. Although it still doesn't work so great with an HGTV set. But the process mangles the original color palette of the game. Is it worth it? No, not really. Although it is the only way to play Famicom 3D system games in the US. Without a Famicom, anyway. Like you mentioned earlier, Square's Tobidase Daisaku Sen came out as 3D World Runner in the US. And, just like the Famicom version, all I have to do to enable the 3D effect is press the select button. By this point, those of you who knew about Rad Racer's secret feature know what I'm going to show you next.
In case you were always wondering why that was there, now you know. It was to make up for the 3DS that you never got 25 years ago. Neither solution was ideal. Which is why the new 3DS is such a big deal, because it doesn't require special glasses or unwanted alteration to the game software to make it give off the 3D effect. But the Virtual Boy doesn't require special glasses. The Virtual Boy was special glasses. I'm okay! What about Orb 3D? What about it? Well, that's all the time we have. Join us for part two of our Retro 3D special, where we find out just why Nintendo's original 3D titles weren't so original after all. Hey, can I get some cab fare? Sure, hold on a second. Oh, hey man, where should I put this? Rosebud. K.O. There you go. Don't spend it all one place, okay? Babacom Dojo. Is this Canadian money? Anybody in there? Hello? Hello? I know you're there. I can hear you unsubscribing. <laughs>